<laughs> Looks so pretty. There's something we haven't spoke about on this channel and I think it's about time we did. And what I'm talking about is the imminent release of Blender 2.8. Now, I don't want to brag and to be honest, I'm not sure I should even be telling you this, but I'm actually a beta tester for Blender 2.8. Don't act like you're not impressed. Anyone can download Blender 2.8. I'm not special. But what I want us to chat about is what I think sets Blender apart from its competition, which, for me, is the add-ons. Hello boys and girls, my name is Danny Mac, and a few months ago I wrote an article called 10 Blender Add-ons that make Blender awesome. And I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go and check that out. But the problem with this list is that it's already outdated, since many of these add-ons don't yet work with Blender 2.8, which I know most of you guys are using, as am I. That's why I thought I'd put together a new list called my top five add-ons that already work in Blender 2.8. Now, one thing I want to make clear is that I've come up with the top five that works for my workflow. Your workflow might be slightly different, so please don't hesitate to leave your own top five in the comments below. I started with this one in the last list and I'm starting with it in this one because as someone who uses Blender primarily for rendering, Nord Wrangler pretty much confirmed the jump from Maya. Now, I know most of you watching this will already be au fait with the beauty that is the Nord Wrangler, but if you've recently noticed a lot of hype behind Blender and you're thinking about jumping over, let me show you this because this is beautiful. First is the feature that I see used most often, which even by itself is a wonderful idea, and it's the emission viewer. At any point during an IPR render, you can check the RGB output of a single node by simply control shift clicking on it. If you've ever spent any amount of time rendering, you'll know how insanely useful this feature alone is, but we've barely even scratched the surface with this add-on. If you press control and drag the right mouse button, you can connect two nodes without even touching them. If you press alt and drag the right mouse button, you can mix two nodes. If you're lazy, you can press Alt-S to cycle through the connections. But to connect it more precisely in the first place, Control-Shift-Drag has your back. By the way, Alt-S will also switch your inputs in a situation like this. Of course, there's a bunch of different blend modes in here, and Mix might not be the one you want. If you hold alternate the add sign, it changes to add. Subtract changes to subtract, or multiply, divide, you get the idea. Alternatively, just use up and down to scroll through them. Oh, and by the way, this works on multiple mix nodes at the same time too. If I wanted to add mapping nodes to these textures, I can just hit Ctrl T. And if I wanted to completely change a node for something else, I can just hit Shift S and select the node I want. Look, we haven't even addressed half of the features of this add-on and I've still got four more to get through and I didn't really intend for this to be a tutorial. So what I'll do is I'll drop a link to the features page in the description which explains every single feature that this add-on has and just go and fill your boots man, it's awesome, check it out, I love it, it's such a great add-on. As someone who uses ZBrush extensively, in fact I use it more than I use Blender, GoB, also known as GoZ for Blender, is an absolute must for me. In fact, I refused to incorporate Blender 2.8 into my workflow until this became available. What GoB will do is transfer all of your models and textures between Blender and ZBrush with one button click, which is obviously incredibly useful and saves an enormous amount of time. So if you're watching Jose Canseco, and I do apologise if I've just butchered your name, thank you so much for updating this add-on. If I'm not mistaken, he didn't actually write the add-on in the first place, but he did update it for Blender 2.8, fixing a load of bugs, so amazing stuff, thank you. Now, he has got his own Gumroll page if you want to go and check that out and maybe support him. He's got a bunch of add-ons here available for Blender 2.8, and I particularly like the look of this Her add-on. I haven't actually had a chance to use it yet, otherwise maybe it would have made this list. But it's definitely something I'm keen to get my hands on in the future because it does look pretty cool. So yeah, go and have a look at that. Ah, machine tools. This is a lovely little add-on. And what I like about it is 
that Blender 2.8 is sure it's more intuitive and it's more efficient than it was before but this add-on says no 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 we can do better than this rather than creating an entirely new function that didn't exist before you know such as go B what machine tools does is looks at the existing functions of blender and then takes them to the next level we can see an example of what I mean with the shading pie menu in the default shading pie you get the options rendered wireframe solid and look dev now one thing I find myself doing all the time is going into rendered mode and then hiding all the overlays then when I come out of the rendered view, I turn back on the overlays. This can get tedious really quickly, so what Machine Tools does is remembers your preference for each rendering mode. So you can see, if I go into rendered view, the overlays are not visible, but if I jump into look dev, they're right there. Now, there's so many things that this add-on fixes that you probably didn't even realise were broken. If we look in preferences, you can see this add-on is an amalgamation of tools and pie menus, and you can see all of the hotkeys under key maps. And what I like about it is that you can turn on the ones you want to use and turn off the ones you don't. So with mods pie enabled, if I hit tab in the viewport, you can see that rather than toggle between different mods, it'll give me this intuitive pie menu instead to help me navigate the different interaction modes. However, if I don't like that feature, I can just turn it off in the preferences and my tab key now behaves the way it did before. Alternatively, I can very easily change the hotkey and use both functionalities if I prefer. As I said, there's a ton of features to this add-on and I'm really not doing it justice here, so I'm gonna leave a link to the developer's made demo video in the description and go and check that out because it goes over all of the features. There's far too many to get through in this video, so do check that out. If you're like me and you see rigging as a necessary evil, and I want to place emphasis on the word evil, then this add-on might be for you. I've been using this add-on for the best part of a year now, and I was delighted to see that there is a 2.8 version available. Now it is in development mode, and consequently is a little buggy, and I can confirm that it is indeed a little bit buggy. But despite the warning messages, it's certainly a lot better than rigging from scratch. If you've ever used the Mixamo rigger, it behaves in a similar way, whereby you define points on your model and then the add-on will do some math magic and place a skeleton inside it. The difference with this add-on is that you have Blender right there at your fingertips to tweak it until your heart's content. As with any auto rigger, you do have to paint the weights yourself, which I really, that's actually what I hate about rigging, if I'm honest. But it does do a pretty good job out of the box and what I tend to do is, because my models are usually only put into one, potentially two poses, what I'll do is I'll just give it basic weight so I'm not going over the entire model, I'll just pose it into the position I want it in, paint weights for that position, then send it over to ZBrush and fix any problems in there. And I find that to be much quicker than trying to weight paint the entire model. Now at $40 this isn't the cheapest add-on on the list, in fact I think it's the only premium add-on apart from the bonus one at the end, but we'll get to that. But what I will say is that from my experience, it's totally worth it. I mean, I think I actually got mine for $30 over at Blender Market, so maybe it's worth waiting for a sale, which is how I got it for $30 rather than $40, and then you'll save yourself $10. This is actually a pretty random one. The Polygon Material Importer is designed to help you import materials downloaded from the Polygon website. I want to make it absolutely clear that this is not a sponsored video. I have done a sponsored video for Polygon in the past, so I thought it was worth mentioning that this isn't one. I just happen to really like this plugin. And what it does is, once you've downloaded all of your textures, you point the add-on to your textures folder, and you get a preview of all of your textures in this little viewer. And it's just awesome. But that's not what this add-on is actually designed to do. In fact, I think this is an update for Blender 2.8, in which case, thank you, Andrew Price, it's amazing. But the core purpose of this add-on is, once you've found the material you want, all you need to do is import it, and it's already set up in the Node Editor, ready to go. So there's no faffing about setting it up. It's just the ready, done, awesome. And that's why I love it. It's quick, it's simple, and it makes life easier. 
And as I say, I do have one bonus add-on, which is in fact my own add-on, the eye designer, which is now available for Blender 2.8. And I'd just like to quickly thank fellow YouTuber JNAM for his help with this add-on. Basically, I asked him how much it would cost for him to help me update the add-on, and he just offered his help for free. So he's clearly a really nice guy. And as I say, he's got his own YouTube channel, which I found really helpful for the more technical side of what we do, but it does have quite an eclectic mix of videos, so definitely worth checking out. Now, if you haven't seen the eye designer, it's essentially an add-on for creating eyes really easily. You just click a button and you've got a pair of eyes and a little light setup to go with it. The eyes will work in either Cycles or Eevee and you get all these options to tweak the look of your eye. I won't go into all the details of this add-on because I've already made a video for that, but if you do decide to invest in it, then I want to say right here and now, thank you very much. You're helping to maintain the channel and also save yourself a lot of time in the process. If you do decide to go ahead and grab a copy of the eye designer and you run into this problem where the eyes render out black, just make sure that auto run Python scripts is turned on in the user preferences and it'll work just fine. It used to be under the file tab, but now you'll find it under save and load. So that concludes my top five Blender add-ons that already work in Blender 2.8. Now, obviously this isn't an exhaustive list. If you do want a much longer list, then go check out this thread at blenderartist.org because they're updating it every day with more and more add-ons that are becoming available for Blender 2.8. And it's a really great resource. So again, I'll drop a link in the description and let me know how you get on. I know I haven't been the most active person on this platform recently and for that I do apologise. One of the reasons is obviously I've been updating my setup a little bit so I've got a new camera, I've got a new microphone and I've even got a new wall which I'm super proud of because I, I put this stuff up myself. It's just laminate flooring stuck to the wall, it really wasn't that difficult. The reason for all this is that I want to start posting videos regularly again and so any feedback in the comments would be much appreciated so that I can improve these videos moving forward. So if you like the video, drop a like and a nice comment. If you didn't like the video, drop a like and maybe, maybe don't bother with a comment. Please subscribe so you see the next video and tap the bell so you really see the next video and I'll see you in the next video. And I need to stop saying next video.